Good evening, sports fans. Crowbat for the win of the Token Minorities here today with the PCL Week 2 versus my man Alex Cool Rocket. So, you guys know, after coming off a big timer win last week, we want to win again this week in Week 2. Let's see what my opponent is rocking here. My opponent's rocking a Pangoro, a Dracovic, a Dynamax Ludicolo, a Quagsire, my good pal Bronzong, and my good pal. Big Bird, a.k. Pelipper. I'm rocking a Dynamax Sigilic with Weakness Policy, a, an Excadrill Life Orb, a Magnet Heliolisk, a Defensive Vile Plume, a Black Glasses Tyranitar, and of course we cannot forget my absolute good pal Mimikyu. Life Orb, of course. Let's jump into this game. I am... Loving some of the music in this game. I, I think it stands on its own weight, especially now that I'm recording with a, an auto capture card. I think it works pretty well. I'm going to lead with my pal Tyranitar as he is going to get rid of that rain. He's going to say, rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Big Bird is not going to be doing anything to me here today. However, I got to th gotta think closely about what I want to do. Although I didn't think as closely because we had to do a quick recreation. In the very beginning of the game, I don't remember exactly what happened. I, I honestly don't remember. Something. This was a week ago now. Something happened where we had to redo the first turn. So, I remember thinking for about 20 seconds. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get my stealth rocks out. So, that's what I do. I click stealth rock right away. He goes into the Quagsire, which is really good. I thought about going for Thunder Wave to catch one of his switches. That worked out great, though, because obviously it would not have affected Quagsire at all, and the Rock's late game is definitely going to be really good for me. I'm thinking about what to switch into next. I'm going to opt to switch into my good pal Siglyph. My hope would be to activate the weakness policy if he uses Ice Beam or something. If I can get that off, we would be basically sweeping through probably his whole team, if not three or four members of his team, because we could Dynamax and get that going. He's going to go for Scald, and because I'm less defensive, it does a decent amount. Really, it does. I'm thinking about whether I want to Dynamax right now, but it's it's questionable whether I want to do it right away. And I'm also betting he's probably Rindo Berry, so it's safer in general to go for the Max Airstream rather than the Max Overgrowth. But I figure it probably has a chance to KO through Rindo Berry, given that I am so offensively invested, modest nature and everything, I do end up going for the max overgrow here. With 30 seconds to spare, I'm, I'm trying to speed up my moves. If you guys ever saw me play in 7th gen, I tended to take a long time to make my moves. I, I fought every move out carefully. It was 12D chess. I mean, I was thinking 12 turns ahead what, what I was going to be doing, and unfortunately we don't have that luxury in this generation. He's going to switch out into a Pangoro. Fine by me. It's not the worst thing in the world for me. I mean, he's going to get a grassy terrain. It's kind of annoying, I guess, but, well, I, I wish obviously now I went for the max airstream. If he's scarfed, then he outspeeds, bad things happen. Nothing I can really do about that. I just got to hope that if he decides to stay in and go for some dark type move against me, I can live because of the Dynamax and I can get the weakness policy up. This should do a decent amount of damage though, but I wish I went for the max, max air drive stream thing, move thing, I don't know. I wish I went for it though, the flying type move. Hindsight's always 20-20 though, but I thought maybe he'd stay in. But it's going to do a lot of damage, and Sandstorm is going to get him down a little bit to at least cancel out the grassy terrain so that's nice I'm gonna try to stay in and go for that big max airstream we'll see where he ends up moving I mean obviously if he's not scarfed I easily outspeed no questions asked if he's scarfed I think I'll out probably live anything and get my weakness policy up so I think that is a good ch chance to get my speed boost with Dynamax and go for that flying type move I'm hoping. I mean, it, it kind of depends on what move he makes. One of the things I've noticed so far, is he's, he, well, you'll, and you'll see this as the game goes on a little further, he takes a lot longer than I am to make most of these moves. So he's clearly using big brain strats here, and that certainly makes me a little bit nervous going through this game. I am going to outspeed, so he is not Scarf. So that's good and bad. If he was Scarf, I think I would have lived an attack. Probably on low health, and I would have got my 
my item off, and that would have been amazing, and I literally would have swept the game, would have been game over, so I'm kind of sad he wasn't Scarf, but you know what, I'll take it, it's one Mon down, right away, Dynamax is breaking the game, I have Speed Boost to boot, we get a lot of good stuff going on there, I'm, I'm happy about that at least, and honestly, Pangoro had the ability to Parting Shot and hit generally hard, I did have the Defensive Vile Plume to help tank it a little bit, but it's still way better to just see that thing gone. That's fine by me. He's, once again, thinking hard about what he wants to switch into here. This is, I know, a, definitely a difficult choice, but I know people are trying to get us to move quicker, and I think I've been adapting generally pretty well. I know maybe not everyone has yet. I'm hoping that he can move soon, so that way there is less of a chance we go to timer, because believe it or not, contrary to popular opinion, I do not like going to timer, and I don't choose to go to timer, guys. It, it just, especially in this gen, no one wants that. No one wants that at all. So the best burb on the planet is going to be switched in after probably about a minute. We don't have anything super effective for it, but we can go for a max airstream or a, a psychic move. We're going to want to stay and use our Dynamax, most likely. I don't think it has anything super effective for against us, so that's unfortunate, which means we're not going to pop our weakness policy while we're in Dynamax. However, we can still get a pretty big hit off on something. I'm, I'm debating whether to go for the Mindstorm, Max Mindstorm, or the Max Airstream. Obviously, really only one of those two moves will be the option. Switching would be a terrible decision. I took my 30 seconds. I, I try to cap my time to 30 seconds when I'm thinking. Pelper is down, as we can see, because that move does a ton of damage. And as I said, Sigalip is modest max special attack this week. That's good. And also, Pelper really doesn't have that great a special defense at all. You got two Mons down. 6 to 4 right now. But this game is far from over because he's still got his Dynamax user, which can set up rain any time he wants it. And yeah, we could do some finagling with the switching between Tyranitar, maybe Heliolisk if I'm lucky. We, we could do some things. We have options, we have choices, but it's a little questionable to see how this will all play out as the game goes on. Our Dynamax user is still here, and he's taking a while to make that pick again. I'm a little nervous that this heater's go- Yep! Heater's going off! Alright, I'm about to move. Well, hopefully this move wasn't too bad. Jolt told me that I can't narrate with a heater in the background. Actually, no, that was just me using common sense. See, when I think of common sense, I tend to just think of, what would Jolt do? What would Jolt say about this? And Jolt would definitely move away from the ginormous heater that's next to him, starting to go off going, Pshhh. I don't think anyone wants to listen to that for 20 minutes. Dynamax will go away. Our superpowers are gone. Ludi Cole is here, and he is looking pretty mean over there. Um, he does have Ice Beam, I'm sure. Dynamax Ice Beam, we are not going to live. We're going to have some big difficulties with that. And this puts us in a predicament. We don't have too many options or choices here. I'm thinking about going to Tyranitar or just staying in. I figure if I stay in and he, he doesn't Dynamax, we could probably live one Ice Beam. If he does Dynamax, we will not live an Ice Beam, but we will at least burn one turn of Dynamax. So that was my rationale here. I did take under 30 seconds, as per my typical rules. There's a Dynamax Looney Polo. It is Fiesta time, as we can see. He is mean, he is angry, he is ready to savage my team. Yep, we got a Max Hailstorm, which is at least going to summon the hail and weaken him a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sigalif, you had no chance of surviving that. Now, I kind of wish I had the Yachi Berry. That would have been amazing if we had Yachi, like last week. But, alas, it did pretty good work. I, I think Dynamax Sigalif has been doing really well for us so far, so I won't complain all that much. He's got the hail up, so I do have some options and choices, but I don't have too many. My options and choices consist of... Possibly Heliolisk, but I also don't want to take a big hit with that either. I could go into Tyranitar just to resist the water type, or to get the Sandstorm special defense boost for rock types and not really resist, but we'll be able to take any move. Maybe we can bait some switches. If he goes for an Ice Beam or some other move, expecting me to go to Heliolisk or expecting me to go into Vileplume, I'll be in really good shape. So I'm thinking about where to go right now. 
I'm gonna try Vile Plume and hope he's gonna try to get up the rain. If he tries to get up the rain, we'd be in fantastic shape. This would be a great turn for us. We're gonna see what happens. The other move would have been possibly Heliolisk. And I'm kind of thinking hindsight it may have been a better play because I think any move Heliolisk could have lived, even if it was very badly. Then again, Vileplume is a bit more expendable because now that the Pangoro is gone, we don't need it that much. Max guys, here we go. All right. So we are going to be able to take that pretty decently well. I mean, that's obviously a Dynamax move, not in the rain. It's going to summon the rain now, though. And we still got a little bit more time that we have got to deal with this super major threat here, this ginormous Ludicolo. It's party time. I'll get the nachos, guys. I'm going to go to Tyranitar. I'm hoping we can fake him out or bait him out. I apologize for things rustling in the background because I really had to put this in a bad location. It's winter and it is very cold, so I had to move from my normal recording location, which is right next to a heater. It's not very fun because I'm literally crouched next to a bunch of stuff in the basement right now. If you could just picture that, picture how painful that is. I'm literally holding my mic. So I'm just really hoping this all comes together well. I'm gonna switch out my boy Vileplume and go into my man Tyranitar, who is the GOAT. Actually, it's a girl Tyranitar, so we better better make mention of that. Setting up that big sand, so he's not gonna get a boosted water type move here. It's gonna do a lot of damage because of the Sandstorm Special Defense boost for rock types, and because of our pull, we're gonna live it barely, but we are gonna live it. So that's good. This final turn is gonna be interesting. He is now not Dynamax. I gotta think about whether I want to save the Tyranitar or not. I could get rid of his Hailstorm if I do save it. I, uh, rather, his Rainstorm. I kind of would like to do that so that way I could outspeed this thing. And that puts me in a weird spot. I'm thinking about going to Helio... Excuse me. Thinking about going to Helios. Thinking about going to Vileplume. And I try for Vileplume once again. Excuse me. It's more expendable than Heliolisk, and if I predict wrong, it could take an attack that I don't want it to take. I'm gonna try to hope I can, I'll end up just taking a water type move with this, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's more expendable to me. And also, if he for some reason pulls a Brick Break and KOs Heliolisk, that would just be insane. Oh my gosh, I, I'd flip. So he does just go for the Ice Beam, it's, it's not the end of the world. Once again, we can still take it, Vileplume's pretty darn bulky probably just a good idea to either try to fake him out or even just go back into Tyranitar. All we need to do is just get rid of that gosh darn rain and then he will not outspeed us the rest of the game unless he's packing rain dance for some reason. I guess it's possible and you know what if he does my man Alex you will deserve to sweep through my team. But I don't think he does. Spoilers at no point does he use rain dance during this game. We're gonna get rid of the rain for good. So that way we can outspeed our good pal Ludicolo for the rest of this game. Unfortunately, we gotta take the nachos away since the Dynamax is gone. Gotta take Fiesta time away. I'm waiting for him to make a move. Another really long turn. That took a while. I made my choice right away. Tyranitar, back in the building. Here's just making a guest appearance on this show as he's gonna set up that sand and then die. That's Tyranitar's role in the show. It's gonna take an Ice Beam, and it's probably actually gonna take it. And it does, with three health left. Not bad, Tyranitar. I gotta I got give you a lot of credit. You're doing pretty darn good in these first, in these first uh, part of the game here. Not gonna live probably much longer, though. <laughs> I don't think so. Unless he misclicks or switches or does something crazy. Not gonna work out. We're not gonna get an attack off. Tyranitar got its rocks up. Switched around a few times and changed the weather. I think that's good enough for me. If I wanted to be super crazy, I could have gone to Heliolisk there. But if he went for the... He really should have probably gone for the Ice Beam there. But if I went to Heliolisk, oh, that would have been mad. That would have been mad. Oh, my gosh. I would, that would have gone crazy. Okay. So I got to choose what to go into now. We got four Mons left. We each, I think, have four Mons left. So this is a tie game, and I think the timer is starting to get down there. I want to say maybe five minutes left in the game. Going to Heliolisk. I know I outspeed. I'm going to try to bait him into switching to see where that goes. We got 
a mo I think it's a modest Heliolisk this week with a Magnet. So hopefully that works out. If I can catch him switching into Quagsire, that would be fantastic. I think Quagsire is still around. So what he's going to do is definitely questionable. If he stays in for some reason and goes for a Brick Break or some crazy move to hit Heliolisk, then, well, I'll have to rethink my strategy. But I'm under the assumption that won't happen, and he probably will have to switch. And yep, my man Jerry is switching out of there. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Sorry, Jerry, you gotta go. Quagsire is here. Jerry Seinfeld. That's who that is, I bet. Setting up that sub. That's that's a nice, nice thing for my man Heliolisk here. Gonna try to get that big grass knot off. Now we have something to take a hit. And if he's Rindo Berry, it's gonna be unfortunate. But honestly, there's a 90% chance we're gonna see a Rindo Berry. Have you ever seen a water ground type without a Rindo Berry? Actually, just ask TTM Sticks about that because that's 30% of his life right there is running Rindo Berry on a water ground type of some kind. Gonna get that off. And it does a lot of damage, even through Rindo Berry, which he probably means he's more physically uh, uh, defensive. He's gonna hit that Earthquake. That's fine. Not complaining all that much about that. My X control is Mold Breaker, so wasting an extra turn or two of the Sandstorm is not gonna bother me at all. I'm gonna try to set up a sub and see if I can catch him doing something crazy. If he roars me out, it's not the end of the world. I, if he, I just wanna catch him maybe switching or scalding would be amazing. I mean, there's not a huge reason for him not to Earthquake, but you never know. I'm just gonna try to feel it out. He's taken a while to think of his move, so maybe, just maybe, he'll do something crazy. I apologize for stuff wrestling again as I'm moving around, because this is very uncomfortable. Pray for me, guys, as my knees are literally dying right now. Gonna go for that big bad sub. Big bad sub setup in this game. He is gonna go for the very obvious earthquake. I got no problem with that, though, because Grass Knot will take this man out at any moment. I kind of just gonna fake him out. I really like that idea. Maybe I'll even try for sub again. I don't know, maybe he'll expect that. I'm not going to, but I at least want him to think there's a chance I will. I have just enough health to. I want to keep Heliolisk a little bit healthy, so if I want to try to set up one more sub down the line, if I need it, I got the option. I got the choice. I also definitely need to keep Heliolisk around, so that way I do not get swept by a Scarf or Bandit Dracovish. Hopefully I said that name right, but Mon Pronunciationitis is something I've suffered with for years. Pray for me, guys. So, I probably said it wrong. I am very sick with that. Although, actually, speaking of sick, I was very sick last week. I felt absolutely terrible, and some people in the comments even told me they liked how I narrated sick. They liked a sick narration. Now, I'm sorry I will not narrate sick every week. That is not... First off, that's not my choice. I, I can't choose to be sick. But, I would not choose to be sick just to get a good narration. Now, there might be some people out there that would infect themselves with random viruses every single week just to get a YouTube video out. Unfortunately, guys, I will not be that person. However, I bet you'll find someone else out there that would do that. But, you know what? Whenever I do get sick, I'll be sure to let you know and make a fun narration out of it. So, Got our man Bronzong here. We have some good memories with Bronzong. Actually, I'm a big fan. I, I don't know if it's changed super drastically this generation. I think it gained actually one or two really cool moves. We're just gonna Volt Switch out of there. I am gonna... I don't have many good options. I, I do think the Earthquake is probably coming. I'm, I, I, hindsight being 2020, I probably could have gone to Vile Plume rather than breaking the disguise on this thing this Mimikyu, but I did figure that a Shadow Claw would be able to KO from this range. It's very offensive, life orb, all that good stuff. So, as long as we can get rid of the Bronzong, I'd say that's a good thing. I'd say it's a very good thing. And that's what I see in my head. Maybe it, it might be a chance, though, if it's leftovers. Ooh, this is gonna be tight. Two minutes left in this battle, so this is not good. We are going to timer. I'm just letting that be known. It's 4-3 to three right now. 4-3. to three. We gotta get this KO here if we want to guarantee a victory. We, it's a roll. This is a roll if I go for Shadow Claw. We have our disguise popped. I'm sure, you know, maybe that's why. Actually, in hindsight, I probably didn't go to Vile Plume just because there were two minutes left in this game and I wanted to get one more KO to make sure we don't accidentally tie. That would make logical sense. So, 
Bronzong is going to get a ton chipped away, but it is not going to die. It lives with probably 2 HP. Come on, man. That's not cool. Gyro Ball's coming in, and that is going to hurt really bad. Actually, so bad that we are going to die. So I'm sad. Honestly, I probably would have played that differently had the timer been longer, but I I can't believe that thing lived. Are, are you kidding? Jeez. All right, so we don't have very many options and choices. I am going to go into my pal Excadrill, a.k.a. Diggersby, because half the time in this narration, I said Diggersby by mistake, and I just edited it out. I shouldn't edit it out next time, but just letting you know. I want to be transparent. So Excadrill can go for the Earthquake on anything. It's going to KO this Bronzong easily. If he goes into Ludicolo, it is probably going to do 60 or 70%, because we have a Life Orb adamant max attack earthquake and ludicolo is not exactly known for its major bulk so we had 24 seconds till the battle ends he's switching out to the only thing in his team that can take the earthquake but i think chipping this hp away will make it so that i have more hp than him and you know what that means folks 12 seconds left Let's see you in a moment I, I can't believe that actually almost did ko come on oh just i don't know if that was a roll or not but uh, we got close. Uh, definitely the Bronzong was a roll, though. It, it's insane. We do win because we have more HP. So another timer game. I'm not surprised with these silly 20-minute timers. Wi-Fi in Gen 8 is Bork. Actually Bork. Not broke. Bork. So that's fun. All right. That's all I got today. That's week two. So we're going to get the big win. We're 2-0 now, and I can't believe it. we got week three coming up, so that'll be fun. We'll see you guys then. Have a fantastic week and peace.